want to be looking at and we'll kind of go through the checklist for it and be very honest with yourself because it doesn't really help to assess your business if you're not honest with yourself about where your health of your business is. Um, and you can just use this as a, a guideline for upcoming months. But some things you want to be looking at is obviously your calendar, what it's looking like, um, how many people you've been sharing the business with, and again, be honest with yourself. And then where like just your emotional state is sometimes because typically if we can get our emotional state up, then our business typically goes up. So it's kind of looking at all Amen. those three different <laughs> aspects of the business. So we're going to be reading these to you guys just so we can have some more clarification if any of these are necessary. And then as we're going through them, just check them off and then we'll kind of assess it and then um, split up into the different breakout groups. So the first one under bookings is I home hostess coach most of my hostesses. So basically, are you going through and teaching your hostesses how to have a great show? Are you teaching them what to do in order to receive those gift cards? And you can be honest, do I do this consistently? I do it once in a while, I never do it, or I want to do it more consistently. And then the next one is, I take five minutes and share the premiere opportunity with my hostess. Are you really sharing that with the hostess? Or are you just kind of casually mentioning it to them? Or are you really saying, you know, it's my goal this year to share how a premiere works with my hostesses. It only take you take me about five minutes to kind of just give you the gist of how it works. That way, if you know somebody um, that might be interested in doing this, you can pass that information along to them. I know you know a lot of people. I mail out my invites for my hostesses. I feel prepared for my show. <laughs> I arrive about 45 minutes early to set up, so I'm ready when the first guests arrive. Again, it might not take you 45 minutes, so that number can change based on what you need, but in terms of are you ready and set up and ready to go when that first person comes. What happens if the time of your party is seven, but their guests show up at six? Then you're still good as long as you're ready for seven start time. <laughs> um, I look the part of the jewelry lady, like Hope was talking about. I look the part of the jewelry lady. I greet everyone at the door at my shows. So are you welcoming the guests as they come in? Because that's, you're starting your booking activity, your sponsoring activity, basically right from when they walk in the door. So by you starting that relationship up front, right when they walk in the door, they're going to have that relationship started with you. It gets, bookings makes it those easier. It makes sponsoring people a lot easier. So starting that right from the first moment they walk in the door. That makes a huge difference. Um, I have a reason to talk to each one. Like if you have name tag, if tickets, or diva dollars, or money for something. Um, so have a reason to talk to each person that's there. I'm pretty sure that that's what that means. Um, you know, if you aren't good at interjecting into a conversation, you kind of feel like the odd man out, compliment people on something. Like I like your hair, I like your shoes. I mean, be genuine, you know, not ingenuine, but like that's a good way to, you know, where do you get your hair done? Let them do the talking, but you're still connecting with each person that's in that room. There shouldn't be one person there that you haven't talked to. Make sense? I mingle before the show and I do not stand at my table. So it kind of goes along with those last two is getting that relationship built with people. Uh, I have the hostess participate by handing out tickets or diva dollars during the show. That way she's not giving drinks and food for everybody <laughs> and interrupting your booking activity. She's great. <laughs> <laughs> I use a flip chart or an outline, not only for yourself to stay on track, but this really helps with sponsoring because then people are seeing how easy it is to do the business. So whatever works for you, but a flip chart or some kind of a script that people can see how easy this business is to duplicate. Um, I use the guest survey or some form of a survey or a prize drawing card or something at all of my shows and give a small prize for a drawing and then read them before checkout. So you're reading the information that you're gathering from the survey before they leave the house. So that you have an opportunity to speak with them. I use a love it list at my show, which is also a wish list. This will help with bookings. This will also help increase your retail. Can you find that on the Premier site? Yes. They either sell them on the Premier site, they'll sell like the wish list that you can get under the service store. Okay. But there's either ones like on the just different, I think there's actually one on our website. If yeah, there's I not, so. I can post one. There is one? I'm pretty sure. Good. <laughs> um, no, it's on there. But, um, or you can hand them a piece of paper. Yep. And or have, have them write down what they like. Or the order form. form. I use the yeah, order, order form. form. Yep. I don't use yeah, hey, that works, whatever. But if they have a wish list of six, seven, eight items and they only purchase two, you can say, well, let's book a show and get the rest for free right. for you. And then you know what they want. I have fun at my shows. I laugh oh, yeah. and so do oh, the yeah. guests. 
If they laugh and learn, they book and buy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do shop or drop or some kind of booking activity. Basically, that's just asking, do you do a booking activity at every single one of your shows? Whether there's two people or 20 people, right? I do a sponsoring activity. Um, the blessings bag, big money, five questions, whatever it is, at every show. No matter if there's two people or 20 people. I tell my personal two-minute story or a 30-second story, however long your story is, but you tell why you're in premiere to, again, start to have people relate to you. I have a separate checkout section at my show, so you're not planned in the middle of the living room, if all possible. You know, you pulled yourself aside somewhere, maybe into the kitchen or just into the corner of the room, but somewhere you get a little more privacy at checkout. I have an organized system for checkout. I try and touch at least three women. Um, <laughs> Boys, close your ears. And give them a compliment. Like if you're helping someone with a necklace, that just or means like putting a bracelet on. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Let me show you. Oh, right over here. You know. Dave's no fondling. Like, like, no fondling. Boys, on. this must be it. <laughs> I ask at least three women at a show if they ever thought about doing what I do. I always have a goal of at least two people at every show to be sharing the business with. So that could be your hostess and another guest, but at least have two, three is awesome if you have a larger show. And I make it a goal to hand out two curiosity packets at every show. Can you so explain yep. what's in a curiosity packet again? I keep forgetting. Basically, a curiosity packet is some type of packet can be whatever you want, envelope. It doesn't have to be a fancy zebra one. It can just be anything. Fancy zebra ones are cute. Um, but you fill it with like one of the mini brochures. At least for me, I would fill it with a mini brochure that doesn't have the prices on it. Um, the frequently asked questions. And something that says something along the lines of your first five jewelry shows, um, or your last five shows, whatever you want to do. Um, that way they can see what are you really making in this business. So it's just something to kind of tickle their palette, if you will, about what it's like to be a jeweler. And the key to that is know who you hand them to or know who took one, and then you follow up with those people. And it's under the sponsoring type of mm -hmm. website. Oh, there was an Yeah, I don't know. Um, I ask every guest at checkout if they would like to have a show before I add up their bill. This is where you want to look at their surveys to see who said either yes or maybe later. Also look at their wish lists to see how many items they purchased versus how many they had on their list, and then you can kind of get them to book a show based on those two things as well. Um, if there's no one at checkout, I get up and mingle. So you don't just go, okay, I'm going to be in the checkout area and sit and wait. Make sure you work the table. Don't worry, they'll find you. I'm ready. They'll wave you down, then you head on over there, and then it's like, they just keep coming. And if they don't, there's a break. Head back out there. Don't hide out and eat food. That's where you go find me and help them. Yeah. Sometimes it's the, our, I've been told our catalog can be overwhelming. Yeah. So yeah. That, and sometimes you need to be showing ladies what their style is. Right. Like so. my grandmother had trouble finding a set of earrings and she was so embarrassed she didn't ask me where it was, she just bought a different pair. Mm -hmm. so I'm like, you could have just Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and those, so don't feel uncomfortable. That's why you have to kind of make yourself available to them. I book two shows on average at every show. So if you're replacing a show with a show, you're kind of keeping your business where it is. By replacing it and adding one, so booking two at every show, that's growing your business and moving it forward. So that should be your goal, is to book two from every show. If you go two shows in a row without booking shows, please contact your upline so we can help you kind of work through what may have gone wrong, what maybe can get tweaked, and sometimes it's not anything that you could have done differently. Um, so just reach out to your upline, though, to see if there's anything that we can tweak. And let's say you only book one. Why don't you challenge yourself that night? Your job's not done. You need to re you need, if you want to grow instead of maintain where it's at, Fill your calendar with another show. Get on the phone, reach out to somebody. That makes sense? Like, same thing when the show cancels. That's the night you should have been working. That's the night you would have potentially gotten to bookings. So make it happen, right? Right? Makes sense? Okay. <laughs> I need to take my own medicine. <laughs> <laughs> I, I use. <laughs> I use a I get paid to sparkle or a closeout form sheet with my hostesses to let them know how much free jewelry they're getting and also what you made for the night. Those are on the website if you guys need to know where those are. These are a really, really easy way of just leaving something that looks professional behind that tells them what their credit is, but the bottom part where it shows what you made that night, 
is really impressive to someone after they've just watched the show that you've just done <coughs> with their friends and family and they saw how much you just made playing in jewelry, that might pique their interest a little more if they were already a little curious. Yes? What's it called on the website? Because I can't find it. I think it's called Post is Closed Out. Yeah, yes. it's under the Home Show tab on the mm -hmm. left hand side of the screen. Hi, hey, Leslie. Hi. <laughs> um, I set a date to close. Right? Yeah. Wait, Instead of the, the well, the, yeah. the back, the top is the continuation of the yeah. um, get paid to sparkler or the hostess closeout form. Just basically says follow up with her and entice her. Um, and the next one is I set a date to close that is five days or less from that night. Please don't keep shows open a long time because it's really rude to the customers that mm -hmm. order that night and came. So, you know, my general rule of thumb is like a week. I don't like to keep them open any longer than a week, but five days is ideal. And just know legally we have to have the product in their hand within 30 days that they purchased it. Mm -hmm. So you can't really, yep, 30 days. So you can't really leave it open more than two weeks because it takes seven to 10 days for it to ship. So legally we have to have it in their hands in 30 days. Lori, what happens if you have someone that's really like mm -hmm. ambitious and gets pre-orders way in advance of the show? Mm -hmm. yeah, like what's the best way to handle that? Because you don't want to discourage the hostess. Mm -hmm. I tell them that it's going to be closed out after the show is held, just to let the customer know that's okay. okay. I've had some time where that person needs that item for like a wedding we had before, mm -hmm. and I would just give them extra credit, basically like some out of my profit, because I put it in as an individual order, okay. and then just tack that onto their show, just so they didn't lose the credit. But that only happened like one or twice, yeah. uh, two times. Well, I remember you said seven to 10 days for delivery. How long, as we get closer to Christmas, how, what is uh, premiere usually like? The, how, Same thing. They're how amazing. They are still amazing. They still usually clock. seven to ten. Yeah. 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 They yeah. are good. Yeah. They overstaff. They'll come out yeah. with if they haven't already a Christmas um, shipping schedule. Yeah, it's out. It's out. It's out. It's out. Oh, yeah. And it'll tell you the dates that you know if you're yeah. going to put it on this date, you have to do overnight yeah. shipping to guarantee yeah. before yeah. Christmas yeah. delivery. But it's just like for regular shipping. It's always better to kind of under promise and over deliver to your guests. Um, but seven to ten days, and they stick by it. They work really hard, especially around the holidays. Okay, that's awesome. Lori, December 14th. On, on our jeweler page, 14th. when you log in with your jeweler number, on the main screen that pops up, there's the pink tabs right across the mm -hmm. middle. The one on the right side says important dates. If you click on that, all of the upcoming important dates. Oh, so wow. there's the holiday shipping oh, schedule. Okay. There's the end of the, I always say marking period, accounting period. <laughs> um, there are different dates for like training dates that are coming up, like regional rally and oh, the okay. day of leadership and all of that is all right on that one spot. So it's the pink important dates tab. They made it really easy for us to see it. And they're very good. I had two years ago, I placed an order and it did not come before Christmas. Um, and it, what ended up happening is it got lost in the mail. Premier sent it, so it was there on Christmas morning. So they really went to bat for me on that because I'm like, it was in before the 14th. It had plenty of time, but UPS lost it. And weather, so happens. I mean, think about weather. yeah, but weather they they take care of you. Time. So, like, mm -hmm. the next one is I follow up with a hostess to make sure she followed up with outside orders and has her order ready. So again, if you're if you're set to close five days after, maybe touch base with her two or three days after just to make sure that she's coming up with her list and. We have those hosts that will kind of like linger for a long time. And reminder, who took the catalog and said, oh, I'm going to, uh, okay, I'm going to take this and look through it. If you let your catalogs out or they want to go, well, I'm going to, I'll let her know. I can't decide tonight. Remind, write down who it was, okay, and tell her, make sure, oh, you know, so-and-so um, said they're going to order. They wanted to order, so we need to follow up with her to see where she's at, okay? Because they forget, too, and they, they might feel uncomfortable, you know? Um... Uh, I have the number. Yep. I have the number of shows each month that I wanted, and if you don't, then we need to figure out why not. I regularly re review all the order forms and guest surveys to make phone calls and book shows. These are called customer care calls, so um, they work really, really, really well. So you can, no matter how long you've been in Premiere, I've done this five, six years, I've gone back. And think about if anyone ever called, contacted you after you made a purchase of any kind, and they're like, how do you like so-and-so? Do you feel good about that, or are you mad when they call? Right. I feel good about that. I'm yeah, talking to yeah. myself. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you like when they do that, right? So don't feel weird if you're saying, well, I haven't done that for two years. You can still go back to those people <laughs> two years ago and say, just wanted to reach out and see how you're loving your jewelry. They're not going to be angry with you. They're going to be like, wow, that's, that's good customer service. Mm -hmm. Should you do it within a short, short time frame? Probably. Right. But don't feel like you can never go back to those people. Um, the kind of rule of thumb is what you want to do is two weeks after that show has closed, 
you want to give all those people a call and say this is when you should expect your jewelry because some people think that we hang on to their jewelry longer and they don't realize that it goes to the hostess's mm -hmm. house. So make sure that you're contacting them and saying, okay, this is the estimated date of delivery. Your hostess will have it. Let me know if you need anything um, once you get your order. And then 60 days after, which is right around our golden guarantee being up, you can contact them again and say, I'm hoping you're loving all your jewelry. Um, we do have that golden guarantee on the item. And it's just customer service calls. You're not asking for anything. But then if you do have a promotion being run or if you are trying to fill your calendar up. Or a new holiday catalog. Yeah, anything. You can say, we've got XYZ happening. Would you like to take advantage of it? Because now, again, you're building that relationship even after the show. And now you are their jewelry lady. Okay. I consistently hold 36 jewelry shows a year. What if you've only been in this for seven months? And that's the thing. This is based on, it depends on your goal. It depends on what you want and what you've set out to accomplish. There's a lot of ladies in here that want to do two shows a month, and that's what they want to do. And that's great. That's 24 shows up a year. So it's based on, basically based on that number. But this is the, I don't know where they come up with the 36, but I think it's like a, for designer, like yeah, growing. probably for someone who wants to like grow. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Or build. <coughs> I work at building relationships with I, with new women, my hostesses, my team. So whatever women are in your premier business. So if you have a team, but um, your hostesses, and again, building those relationships with those people. Um, I know what my profit is from my business. I track my finances. This is huge. If you don't have a system that you are comfortable with, that you know how much you're making after each show, please see one of us and we can kind of help steer you in the right direction because this is a really, really important part of your business. If you don't know how much you're making, more importantly, if your husband doesn't know how much you're making, <laughs> you're going to want to know how much you're making because it makes the business a lot more exciting when you know that you're actually profiting from this. And Premier does a really nice job now for us with that tool after you check out that oh, yeah. shows that to you. They never did that before. So. That's really nice to even have, you know, print that one sheet out and then I'll show you right there. There you go. And then you can track it really easily. Um, okay, so the next section is building a business. I know some of you probably jumped ahead of this, but this is fine. I just wanna make sure that you get clarification from anything. I speak up and work at building relationships with my sideline jewelers. So a lot of times people will tell me one of the most, the biggest things they have in Premier is the relationships that they've built in Premier. And some of their relationships don't necessarily come from their premier mom, their premier grandmother, although they have relationships with them. They come with their premier sisters or sidelines because everyone has something to offer. So reach out. I look at other premier jewelers' websites for ideas and training. There is not a lack of training out there. If you want training, if you oh, want more ideas, it is out there mm -hmm. to be found. Don't get overwhelmed by it, but know that if you want some training or if you've got a down night, you can find something to be listening to. I am teachable and eager to learn. I am, I should enter one. I am not a Debbie Downer. <laughs> I'm like attending training a priority, so give yourself a pat on the back or pat the person next to you. All right, right. Yeah. <laughs> this is really, really important. Just getting around the people that are working the business and wanting to work the business is really, really key. So what happens is when you hibernate, then you're isolated, and then when it gets tough, then you give up because you're alone, right? But if you stay with it, then you're surrounding to get that pump up every month, it makes a big difference. Um, I'm sharing the business with ladies every month. I hold my own one-on-ones or OPs. Please do not feel like you have to do this. If you are not comfortable sharing the opportunity with other people, don't. <laughs> there are tons of opportunities for you to get them connected with um, us sharing the opportunity for them. Actually, do you want to put the screen up, honey? Yeah, we'd love to. Thank this you. Awesome. Thank you, honey. Look at this fat. Oh, my God. <laughs> Look at Hope's. Can I show everybody? Show Look at how. <laughs> I love this. Look at her beautiful um, case while we're waiting to turn on. Look how beautiful her case is. It's a flashy. It's Disney Princess case. I love that. By the way, talking about the training videos. Oh my God. I saw one, I was watching one last night, which was Golden Guarantee versus Lifetime Warranty. And she was great. Yeah. 50 different ways of saying no. <laughs> but one of the things she said is if you ever earned out, you can fix it. Mm -hmm. All right, so here are two numbers you're going to want to jot down. Can you guys see those okay? Um, the one on the bottom, these are live OP calls that we're offering throughout the month of October. So contact whoever you guys can think of that would want to hear about this opportunity.